大家好，我是加购蒋伟文，各位老师、同学，还有家长、现场贵宾们，还有我们全台湾正收看的观众朋友们，欢迎收看我们一零九年度的外交小尖兵的总决赛的现场。Hi, I'm your show host Jacko, and welcome to the 2020 Team Diplomatic Envoy Competition. This is the final stage. I'm so proud to be standing here among the brightest and the talented Taiwanese youth, and perhaps witnessing our future leader in making. So, congratulations again for making to the final stage. Give yourself a warm welcome, okay? Give yourself a round of applause. Wow. 在现场的各位同学呢，可以都是很厉害的佼佼者，大家都有很棒的英文的能力，而且配合了同学的合作无间，再加上家长及老师的这个支持与鼓励啊，才能来到我们这个总决赛的现场哈。那么看到同学们这么有活力哦，就让我想到我是十二岁的时候去美国，当时我的英文程度呢，大概就是 I'm a student, this is a pencil, thank you, and you. 啊，大概就这样子而已。所以当时我在美国上课的时候，非常辛苦哦，听不懂老师在说什么，也没办法举手发问，也更不用说什么分组讨论啊、上台报告啊。对我来讲是天方夜谭啊。所以说我当时呢，如果有像同学们这么好的一个优异的英文的学习的环境，而且可以很小就接触英文、学习英文的话，我当时去美国求学的时候，应该就会快乐很多，而且会很快的。交到朋友，说到朋友呢，我们今年的主题就是台湾的青年行，南下博感情。台湾 talented youth frosting friendship south bound， 这是我们的主题，也是呢我们期许所有的朋友们呢，我们今天的外交小尖兵呢，可以以你们最棒的英文的能力，当做你们沟通的桥梁，然后走向国际，拿出理性与感性。啊，像我们南向邻近的国家们呢，跟他们青年朋友呢，搭建出一个非常棒的良好的关系哦。好，我们朝这个目标前进，大家说好不好？好。好的。那么接下来呢，我们要赶快开始我们的比赛哦。在开始之前呢，我们请我们大家长，就是我们的教育部的国民以及学前教育署的戴淑芬副署长，我们做个开场的致辞。我们欢迎副署长。好，谢谢。你好。谢谢，谢谢，谢谢。好。呃，我们外交部的呃崔副执行长，呃黄科长，还有我们带队的师长，呃各位呃评审，还有各位心里非常紧张，呃期待要得奖的各位同学，呃大家午安，大家好。好。呃，教育部跟外交部一起合办这个呃外交小尖兵呃英语种子的选拔，其实已经经过十九年哈，这段。这是一段呃蛮长的呃时间。那在这一段时间里面，其实我们已经有两千四百五十一个队伍，有九千呃八百零四位同学，呃经过我们这样的一个呃甄选的程序，然后成为种子。其实我也了解到，这是一个非常辛苦的一个过程，因为各位同学一定会经过师长非常严格的一个培训，呃提升各位的英语能力到一定的程度，又要经过我们的呃初选。要经过团体的英语演讲比赛，然后到现在就是要呃，不是只有英语的呃演讲比赛，还要益智问答哈。那这是一个非常辛苦的过程。呃，各位其实非常的了不起。呃，像我们今年的话，其实有一百多个队伍呃报名参赛。那今天入围的二十四个呃。队伍其实各位已经都非常非常的棒。那教育部推呃。国际教育其实也一定有一定的那个呃，有一段呃蛮长的一个呃时间哈。那呃，我们呃除了希望提升呃学生的语文能力，其实也希望呃学生对于就是呃国际有更深的了解，然后呢能够促进我们的国际交流。这段时间以来，其实我们也有五十三个呃队伍代表我们国家到国外去呃访问。地点包括呃北美、欧洲啊、呃，还有很多呃我们呃东亚的一些就是呃友善的一个呃国家哈、哦，那也表达我们呃对于就是国际友人的一个呃善意哈、哦。那呃我们的同学呃其实不是只有呃很优秀的呃英语的呃能力，其实呃也发挥每一个人的特质，然后把台湾呃文化风土民情呃一些专长，其实呃。介绍给我们国外的那个友人，也获得呃我们呃国际的友人很大的一个呃赞赏，然后我们缔结了很好的一个国际友谊。那我想呃我们的同学呃
。这样的一个实力的培养，其实也呼应到新课纲核心素养里面，呃，多元文化跟呃国际理解。那希望呃我们的同学，不管你今天有没有得奖，我们都能够百尺竿头，呃，更进一步。那希望就是呃，在这个比赛之后。呃，仍然可以呃发光呃发热，然后继续努力。希望呃各位帮助呃我们台湾，让世界可以呃看得见。然后也祝福各位能够心想事成，获得你心目中理想的大奖。谢谢，谢谢各位。我们再次谢谢我们的副处长，谢谢。接下来呢，在比赛开始之前，我们赶快来介绍一下我们今天呢身负重任的评审教授们。第一位介绍是我们的国立台湾大学政治学系黄凯平教授。接下来，国立台湾师范大学英国语文学系 Mary Goldman。接下来，世新大学英语学系教授李振清教授。接下来介绍国立台中教育大学英语学系王雅英教授。接下来欢迎我们的国立成功大学外国语文学系陈安纯教授。好了，我们感谢我们所有的评审教授参与了。接下来我们在进行我们的决赛之前呢。我们赶紧来看一下，进入我们总决赛的二十四支这个特优的队伍呢，他们是如何拿到决赛的门票的？请看 VCR。好，再次恭喜我们二十四组进我们总决赛的同学们。现在马上为各位介绍一下我们的比赛规则哈。那么今年呢，为了让更多的同学可以参加我们的外交小尖兵呢，我们的主办单位外交部还有教育部特别的让我们的赛事可以说精进化，而且让我们的总决赛呢也略做了调整啊。那么分两个阶段。第一个阶段就是我们的团体的英语即席演讲，第二个阶段是意志问答的竞赛。那我们参赛的入伍的队伍呢，原我们参赛的入围的队伍则原本的十八队增加到二十四队那么期盼今年所有的参赛队伍呢，可以拿出很好的这个表现，得到很棒的成绩啊！而且我们今年呢，特别的为这二十四组的队伍呢，进入我们总决赛都有一个进入总决赛的证明啊，以资鼓励啊。那么这个前十八名呢，还可以获得外交小尖兵的奖状。那么前三名更能获得外交小尖兵的奖杯哦。那么同学们，今天有信心可以拿到冠军吗？好，各个都有信心，大家加油了。我们马上回来。好的，现在马上进行我们第一阶段的团体英语即席演讲的比赛。那么同学们都到我们的等待室去备战了，同学们加油！好，现在我们请到的是我们外交部公众外交协调会的王日生王专员，为我们抽出今天的题目啊。今天总共有三颗题目球，一号、二号、三号，请王专员把三颗球放进我们的抽题盒。二号、三号，哦，免三颗球，请抽出今天的题目。好的，王专员抽到是二号球。好，现在请王专员呢。把这球交给我，请打开来我们二号的题库。那王专员会念出这个英文题以及中文呢、啊、各一次。好，题目已经出现了，我们请王专员为我们念出英文、中文各一次。谢谢。呃、uh, ，英文。Defending democracy, freedom, and the human rights. Is in the interest of all civilized nations. How can Taiwan act as a force for good in advancing these universal values? Chinese. Defending democracy, freedom, and human rights is in the interest of all civilized nations. 领域扮演世界良善力量。好，谢谢王中原。现在题目已经出现了，我们也会将这个题目呢，呃，分发给我们在等待室的这个同学们。我们有二十分钟的准备时间，请同学们加油了。好，接下来呢，我们请王中原继续念出我们的题库。
。好，接下来呢，呃，我们也请王专员呃替我们打开来剩下的题库一号以及三号。好，也请念出我们题库啊，英文与中文各一次。Taiwan's achievement in containing COVID-19 have been widely praised as the Taiwan model. Explain how you would share Taiwan's anti-anti-pandemic experience with people from other countries. 中文。我国此次防治武汉肺炎成果广受各国肯定，被誉为台湾模式。请示说明您将如何向国际友人介绍台湾的防疫经验。好的，这是我们的第一题的题库。那请王专员为我们公布第三题的题库。啊，这这两题都是没有被选中的题库哈。好，请说明英文、中文各一次。Social media is a major source of information for many people. How can you discern what is disinformation on social media and avoid further disseminating it? 社群媒体已是今日大众接受资讯的主要管道。请问您认为该如何分辨及避免协助？传播社群媒体的错假讯息。好，我们已经公布全部的三个题目了。我们也谢谢我们的王专员，请回座休息。嗯，现在呢，我们同学们就开始计时了，有二十分钟准备时间，大家加油了。啊！经过二十分钟的准备，团体英语即席演讲比赛即将开始。首先欢迎我们第一队上台。计时开始。Peace can only last where human rights are respected, where the people are fed, and where individuals and nations are are free. The Dalai Lama, the Freedom in the World 2019 Index, rated Taiwan with a score of 93 out of 100, making Taiwan one of the most free societies in the world. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen. 20 minutes ago in the preparation room, my teammates and I decided on three wonderful avenues how Taiwanese can act as a force in advancing human rights diplomacy. Take it from here, Matthew. I believe Taiwanese can act as a force by promoting our human rights diplomacy through music. We are the world. We are the children. Michael Jackson famously stated in his popular song that attracted audiences from around the globe. Bob Geldof's famous African Live Aid concert on July 13, 1985, famously smashed TV ratings with over 2 billion viewers worldwide. These are two examples of music that music is able to enhance people's interests in human rights diplomacy. Using these two examples as an inspiration, Taiwanese youth could present their wonderful hearts in a catchy song for the world to enjoy. Furthermore, holding a concert in the hopes of garnering international support and interests could create a bountiful outcome for Taiwan. For Taiwan. Let's welcome Sam to share his ideas. I believe Taiwan can act as a force in upgrading and enhance the new net databases to advise with our tested and effective methodology. We have the freedom to take a walk outside and greet our neighbors anywhere. Thanks to a group of talented college students from National Taiwan University and National Jiao Tong University created an intriguing information resource system called Fight COVID Taiwan. They provide the helpful expertise and skill to the world in a chic and modern way. But 
this type of technology is not just for COVID-19 and nor for Taiwan. So we hope to upgrade and enhance this type of databases. Our government can collaborate with Taiwan's technology leaders, such as TSMC, to create the new databases to store all of our epidemic prevention experience. Being able to keep our data modified and store all of our and being able to being able to store of our data modified and ready to adapt to future disaster. We can also drop a seed, drop a plant a seed for others to for others to learn from our success. What do you think, Tony? I believe that promoting Taiwan's human rights diplomacy via film or video would be effective and brilliant. Film is one of the most touching media ever created. The Taiwanese government has been promoting Taiwan's success on epidemic prevention via such a media. Taiwan model, blessings from Taiwan, and it never gives up are old videos which the Taiwanese government has produced to convey an important information of Taiwan's availability. Mofa Taiwan also created a virtual reality video. Three crucial steps. Virtual reality providing greater presence than normal videos, maximizing the effectiveness on viewer understanding. All these videos have gained great success and raised Taiwan's international visibility. As Taiwanese youth, we believe that we can extend such a model to other areas. Using it to advance Taiwan's human rights diplomacy would be effective, creative, and brilliant. Back to you, Richard. Since the year 2000, Taiwan's benevolent democratic system has procured three peaceful transitions of power. In Taiwan, civil liberties, protections of civil liberties, are actively robust because Taiwanese care and like to help. As you've just heard, promoting our human rights diplomacy through music, upgrade and enhance a new databases to advise with our tested and effective methodology. Advancing Taiwan's human rights diplomacy via touching videos are no doubt three significant ways for us to promote our hu human rights diplomacy to the world. <laughs> Human rights strike a chord with everyone because, because we, we are, are people. people. As Taiwanese youth, we believe that human rights diplomacy is more meaningful through, through greater understanding, constant improvement, and, and meaningful, meaningful inspiration. inspiration. Thank you. 好，我们感谢我们第一组，请回座休息。接下来，我们请我们第二组做准备。好，接下来欢迎我们第二队上台。请开始计时。Speaking of the deprivation of human rights, what pops into your mind first? Is it the people whose disappearances befell upon them without any trace? Or is it the ones whose rights are violated? For they stand up to speak against the absurd power abuse and expansion of their kings or rulers? Dear judges and fellow contestants, good morning. As we all can see, the encroachment of human rights is still in the cards, visible to her recognition. Vivian, what do you think? Thank you, Amber. Several months ago, I joined an activity in Taipei held by the Taiwan Association for Human Rights to support the protesters in Hong Kong. On that day, I acted a role in the play designed by one of the victims suffering political persecution. Not until then did I realize the tough ordeal facing those Hong Kong people. 
they escaped their homeland because they decided to fight against the extradition bill or strive for democracy and human rights. This unbelievable fact made me speechless. Those demonstrators in Hong Kong are not trying to be the superheroes. They are only ordinary people, just like you and me, who aspire to a peaceful life. Also, I was moved to see quite a few Taiwanese people proactively taking action to bolster the mutual faith in human rights shared by the residents in Taiwan and Hong Kong. I sincerely believe only when everyone is aware that human rights are not just a slogan, will we, together, have a better future. Tiffany, could you please tell us your story? Thank you, Vivian. When the whole world is silent, even one voice becomes powerful. Everyone agrees that human rights are essential in a democracy. Considering speaking up for them and taking action, we all still have a long way to go. I recently attended an online meeting held by the school, helping us put our thoughts into action. The school helped us to put our thoughts into action. The school cooperated with Nanyang Girls High School in Singapore to discuss the rights and situation of migrant workers. Both countries' workers are locked in their rooms with 20 or more people. In their presentation, they told us migrant workers in Singapore and Taiwan have a common predicament. Even though they are confirmed cases, their rights still cannot be ignored. This activity that us students know more about human rights and learn more about migrant workers' situation in different countries. Renee, can you tell us more about this issue? Thank you, Tiffany. Youth can utilize the opportunities our government provides. For instance, a student from NTU, Guan Ru Chen, applied for a subsidy to work for the Human Rights and Development Foundation in Bangkok. After getting familiar with Local Labor Act and the unfriendly situations workers face, he worked for Prachatai, a non-profit online newspaper in Thailand. He reported issues such as Thai migrant workers in Taiwan arousing public awareness in human rights. In addition, in 2016, five youth ambassadors brought historical data of the 228 incident. They visited human rights museums all around the world to share insight into the development of human rights as well as the measures to fight for them. These are the steps we take to make our society more friendly towards the human race. Finally, Amber will give us a conclusion. Thank you, Renee. As teenagers, our age is our greatest disadvantage because we are young. Our hands are tied. But our age is also our greatest advantage. We have a lot of possibilities and potential although some may perceive us as immature and naive. We still believe in ourselves and are determined to put our thoughts into action. By taking part in non-governmental activities, by joining international online meetings, by seizing chances provided by the government, we sincerely believe that we can and we will surely promote human rights diplomacy. Thank you. Thank you. 接下来，请我们第三组做准备。请我们第三队上台。The COVID-19 pandemic has taken away the lives of more than 1.5 million people. This year, we have the most female Nobel Prize winners in history. 
According to the United Nations Children's Fund, more than 30 million children in the world are not able to receive education. What do all these facts have in common? Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. They are all about human rights. So how can Taiwan contribute to the international community through promoting human rights? Now, my teammate Minnie will elaborate. Thank you, Avik. According to the International Bill of Human Rights, everyone has the right to life. However, this year, many countries are plagued with the COVID-19 outbreak, and many lives are threatened. During the pandemic, our government did a great job in containing the virus and has been held as the Taiwan model for other countries to follow. We also send medical supplies, such as face masks, ventilators, and protective gowns to countries in need. Moreover, we released a joint statement with the Czech Republic to exchange best practices and anti-pandemic measures. Several Taiwanese doctors also went to our diplomatic allies, such as Palau, Tuvalu, and the Marshall Islands to help fight against the virus. By protecting our human right to life, Taiwan can promote our image as a humanitarian aid provider on the world stage. What do you think, Claudia? Thank you, Minnie. I couldn't agree more. Taiwan also prides itself on its advocacy for women's rights. It's worth mentioning the work Taiwan has done to bring about gender equality, a crucial index of a democratic country. According to the United Nations Development Program, Taiwan ranked eighth in the world for gender equality in 2019, which is better than Finland, Singapore, and even Germany. Besides, Taiwan has passed the Act of Gender Equality in Employment. Moreover, since this August, we've cooperated with the U.S. on a project called 2X Women Initiative which aims to enhance women's economic empowerment and helps them build a more sustainable livelihood in countries like Palau and Paraguay. This project has successfully catalyzed three billion US dollars in investments towards projects run by women. All of these have proved that Taiwan is certainly a pioneer in promoting women's rights. What do you think, Amy? Thank you, Claudia. I totally agree. Education is a human right with immense power to transform. As a member of the democratic community, Taiwan is committed to making a difference in the world by providing a better education to people in need. Our government has held educational forums and collaborated with numerous countries, including Vietnam, Thailand, Germany, and the UK. We also shared our experience with adaptive learning platforms when a Minister of Education of Belize visited Taiwan last year. In addition, our students have been volunteering in Belize with the Educational Service Group of National Tsinghua University for the past decade. They have helped rural children connect with the world through information technology and set up lighting in classrooms. As Malala Yousafzai said, one book, one pen, one child, and one teacher can change the world. Back to you, Eric. Thank you, Amy. We are indeed changing the world. Human rights are universal value and an important indicator of how democratic a country is. Even though we are not a member of the UN, we are persistently putting our efforts into improving human rights. Taiwan model helps safeguard human right to life. Protecting women's rights promotes gender equality. And educational rights help transform children's lives. Ladies and gentlemen, UN Women Goodwill Ambassador Emma Watson once said, if not now, when? If not me, who? That's promote human rights for, for all humankind. humankind. Thank you. 谢谢,我们第三组请回座休息。
请第四队上台。请开始计时。Honorable judges, good morning. Human rights are international concern. They're inalienable and owed to individuals simply on account of their status as a human being. Some core human rights, notably prohibitions on torture, genocide, slavery, and racial discrimination, have thus solidified into international law rules. Some impressive international architecture aimed at protection and promotion of human rights has also been erected and added new dimension to human rights diplomacy. For example, the International Criminal Court and many non-governmental organizations (NGOs) have been played a vital part in the evolution of international human rights system. Without these NGOs lobbying, negotiating, and bringing human rights abuses to the international diplomatic agenda, attention might not have been focused on specific cases of human rights violation, nor would some nations' foreign policies on such aspects have been influenced or criticized. Indeed, defending human rights is at the heart of many nations' foreign policies. However, from a more realistic viewpoint. It is naive to suppose that countries with questionable human rights records, like Cuba and Venezuela, have signed or ratified a human rights treaty, as they believe in the principles that such instruments contain. Let's step back and look at the political landscape the international community currently faces. There are, in reality, some countries which show commitment and deciding to enter into treaties. But they do so only as a response to external pressure or internal propaganda. They never really expect to comply with their obligations. In other words, some countries seem to be committed by ratifying international human rights treaties, but undermine the rights that they have vowed to protect. For example, the merging powers like China and Russia are themselves open to the charge of widespread human rights abuse. And thus, can hardly be expected to wield it in good faith against others. A real universal acceptance of specific obligations and the practice of multinational cooperations seems impossible. Well, in terms of human rights diplomacy, things are just impossible without sufficient amount of time and overall consensus. While I agree that pushing too soon for a treaty on human rights protection. Where some states have not indicated a preference or even presented a slight indication on their position, could present a risk for the future. I'd also like to point out the instant aspect of human rights diplomacy. Since the internet disseminates information and influences public opinion swiftly, the authoritarian governments are unlikely to control. Gross abuses of human rights are soon publicized or televised because of the CNN factor. Which brings the humankind closer together and results in something must be done syndrome. The human rights issues, hence, can no longer be taken into consideration with little care. Thanks to the mass media, worrying trends are not muted but would be echoed and amplified, even though they are often presented as higher imperatives. The universality and primacy of human rights will thus be more upheld and strengthened. So. To embrace the fundamental values of human rights, I think Taiwan needs to depend on the following three imperative E's. The first is to empower the state institution, court, media, and activists who fight for rights by funding and defending the human right defenders and those who wish to silence them. We can prevent human right violators from sweeping their crimes under the carpet. Second, get prepared to enforce human rights through public statements. Either televised headings or live stream video will do. Last but not least, to embody human rights, we have to foster effective institutions to monitor abuses, a free press, an open internet, and a robust society, which help preserve human rights under the rule of law. And when dealing with third countries, whether it is business, development, or security issues, stand ready to invoke human rights against any country. Big or small.
All in all, human rights are one of the saving graces of the Asian institution of diplomacy. We are then justified in calling for resistance to despondency in foreign policies. And recognizing that we all, at the moment in our lives, will be in a minority in need of rights to protect us against a powerful majority. Thank, Thank you. you. Since the end of last year, the world has been affected because of the virus. We, Taiwan, did a wonderful job in preventing the disease. Because of that, Countries from all over the world started to notice that there is a country named Taiwan. They can help. They are helping. In 2003, we faced the SARS alone. But this time, we choose to, to stand with the world. For me, I take this as a great opportunity for Taiwanese youth to show the world our efforts, values, and our powers that we can give to the international society. But the problem is, how can we young Taiwanese people act as a force for good in advancing the universal values? Now, Jack is going to explain some problems and what we have done in the past few years. Thanks, Toby. As you know, Taiwan leads the world in the domain of gender equality. First, Taiwan is the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. And second, in the 2020 Human Development Report by United Nations, Taiwan ranked number nine in the world and number one in Asia in gender equality. These are great evidence that Taiwan is excellent in promoting this right. One of my classmates, Brian, he's a gay. But for years, he was suppressed by the traditional values of marriage. He, can, he couldn't say, hey, I'm a gay. But with the legalization of same-sex marriage, he can now spoke his mind freely and interact with others who are the same with him all over the world. Since we have those values, we, we are trying to share these values. But Taiwanese youth are making great efforts in promoting this universal value to all over the world. And now, Charlie is going to share this with you. Thanks, Jack. I'm sure all of you agree with me that Taiwanese teenagers are good at using social media. Nowadays, when we're using Instagram or Facebook, we often post some image or picture with captions above it. And also, uh, uh, what we can, uh, in, but what really catch are uh, those eyes when others are looking at our post? Is it the words? No, it's a picture. And there's another saying, a picture worth a thousand words. So why don't we find some Taiwanese potential artist or internet celebrity to make some pictures or image that's talking about what can we promote human rights diplomacy? And then we post it online to let our ideas or and these universal values spread worldwide. Now Ruby is going to wrap it up for us. Thanks, Charlie. In the previous part of this speech, we've covered how much 
efforts we've done before and how many success that we've made before. But sadly, we've been muted and muffled by some certain events in the past. But today, because of the virus, the world started to notice us, our voice are started to be heard. And this is just an excellent opportunity for us to speak out for our country. Now, you may be asking yourself, how can a senior high school student help in this matter? Our aim is to encourage you to go further and use the full power, just as Charlie have mentioned, of your Instagram followers, your Twitter followers, or even set up a YouTube channel, start making some video clips and drama about what we have done and our success and post them online. Let's take our school for an example. We had a club called English News Club and this semester, due to the pandemic, we've been making lots of drama videos about how we prepare for the virus, how we control it and how we fight it. In this way, together, if all of us use our Instagram, our YouTube, our Twitter to post something relevant to the human rights values and show them to the world, we can together promote Taiwan to the world stage and make everybody know how wonderful our country is. Thank you. 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 Now we will invite the sixth team to the stage. Let's start. On March 4th, the U.S.-based non-government organization Freedom House announced the list of Freedom in the World 2020. Taiwan, keeping its outstanding record, 93 points, ranked the second free country in Asia and the 25th in the world. Apparently, Taiwan has done an excellent job in promoting human rights. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. No doubt, Taiwan has regarded human rights as an important issue of our internal affairs and diplomacy. Here, we will elaborate on how Taiwan can act as a force for good in defending democracy, freedom, and human rights in the following three aspects, including our policies and laws, human rights task force, and our domestic human rights education. First of all, Bella will elaborate. Thank you, Bacon. Up to this year, Taiwan has signed and enacted six official policies for human rights, such as the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, and so on. This undoubtedly shows that Taiwan has put effort in promoting human rights diplomacy Speaking of which, the legalization of same-sex marriage in 2019 is a good example, which has granted homosexual couples the same rights to get married as heterosexual couples. This is something unprecedented in Taiwan and Asia. No doubt, with these policies Taiwan have, we can definitely enhance our democracy, freedom, and human rights. And now, it's your turn, Kelly. Thanks, Bella. Second, Taiwan has assembled a team to specialize in promoting human rights diplomacy. This team is called Human Rights Task Force, whose main task is to coordinate 
reports on international human rights issues for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They have continuously, they have, they have do something on human rights diplomacy. And these human rights related divisions have hold, have holding um, meetings to discuss and improve human rights. What they have done is exactly what Taiwan can continue doing. Then, Esther, what do you think? Thanks, Kelly. Finally, to act as a force for human rights, Taiwan has started to strengthen domestic human rights education. In October 2019, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs held an international workshop. The former Secretary General of the International Federation of Human Rights, Debbie Stothard, was invited to give a lecture called The Robust Human Rights Policy, Taiwan's Competitive Edge in their International Community. She addressed how Taiwan can use human rights as a soft power to cultivate Taiwan's international image and competitiveness under the emphasis on the universal value of human rights. Then, Bacon, what's your conclusion? Thanks, Esther. As you can see, Taiwan deserves the recognition for its contributions in promoting human rights diplomacy. With our policies and laws, human rights task force, and our domestic human rights educations, we Taiwanese can thus put efforts in bringing this universal value to every corner of this world. Everybody, united, united we stand, divided we fall. Thank you. 谢谢我们第六队，请回座休息。现在我们请第七队做准备，谢谢。好，我们请第七队上台。请开始计时。Did you guys listen to the speech given by World Vision last Friday? No. What was it about? Well, it was about children's education in developing countries. What are human rights? Most countries have human rights in their laws, but what is a right? Right, that which is morally correct, just, or honorable. Unfortunately, not every human has the same idea about what is and isn't moral. The dictionary also defines right as a legal entitlement. But entitlement means that it is given and therefore could be taken away. Rights aren't rights if someone can take them away. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights was ratified by the Legislative Yuan in 2009 and has 53 articles. Not only Taiwan, but most of the world has signed this agreement. To summarize it simply, it says that everyone should be treated equally under the law. So, people give the government the right to rule, and they agree to rule us equally. Taiwan has been working on different aspects of human rights these years, such as humanitarian aid to developing countries and promoting indigenous people's culture. The latest progress that caught the world's attention is the legislation of same-sex marriage. This is a great example of dealing with divergent issues in a democratic society. In the last 30 years, Taiwan has gone from martial law to a prospering democracy embracing human rights. This was a first in an Asian country. The Freedom House Index rated Taiwan as one of the freest countries in Asia. 
Civicus Award Alliance for Citizens' Participation said Taiwan's legalization of same-sex marriage was a milestone for LGBTQ rights. Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen, tweeted, We took a big step toward true equality and made Taiwan a better country. As a result of all this attention, Taiwan has been increasingly involved in human rights forms by NGOs or non-governmental organizations all around the world. Working through NGOs has been tactically known as the diplomacy of the democracy, where Taiwan can promote human rights to the citizens around the world. Those regular people then influence their elected official to form stronger ties with the country they are interested in visiting. For example, Taiwan and the European Union have agreed to work together and hold the gender equality cooperation and training framework in Taipei. Taiwan now can share this information with Southeast Asia, Japan, and Korea. What can we do next? Another group of people who are not being treated fairly are the 800,000 Southeast Asian migrant workers. Because they are not citizens, they have no legal right to vote and therefore have no voice. Taiwan has been called the heart of Asia. So is it caring enough to treat those foreigners as fairly as our own citizens? If so, the people should demand fair wages, housing standards, better working conditions, and protections of the law for our visitors. We have a golden rule. Treat others as you wish to be treated. A simple yet powerful philosophy. Why is it then that so many people around the world don't enjoy the same basic human rights as others? The answer might come from within. Do you believe that everyone should be treated equally? If so, then join other caring Taiwanese who are using their diplomacy skills to bring that right to everyone human. Everyone has a right to learn. Everyone has a right to learn. Everyone has a right to learn. And that's what our goal is. Thank you. 谢谢我们第七队，请回座休息。现在我们请第八队来做准备请上台。计时开始。Good morning, honorable judges, teachers, and all the friends here. I'm Athena. I'm Carol. I'm Mia. I'm Ice. Today we are going to talk about human rights diplomacy. What is human rights diplomacy? Let's start with dismantling the phrase and talking about human rights. As human beings, we all have certain rights, and it's our power because we can obtain, use, and own land. The existence of this power can protect us and help us live in peace. The right to freedom in human rights includes personal freedom, freedom of speech, religion, organization, and culture. Personal freedom guarantees that we can participate in various gathering and social occasions. Once we lose this freedom, we won't be able to enjoy our civil rights. Freedom of speech, for example, equivalent to freedom of expression, means that what we have said is guaranteed to a certain extent. The right to freedom in religion means that we can choose the religion we want, since we have religious right to protect us. Other powers, such as the right to employment, education, and property, are also closely related to our lives. Here comes one question. Who defines the international human rights law? It's the United Nations General Assembly. The UN General Assembly has passed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 
1948, and it has become a significant normative standard of the value for the Constitution, international laws, and the global community. The UDHR, together with the two covenants, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, make up the International Bill for Human Rights, which functions to advance the fundamental freedom and to protect the basic human rights of all people. What about human right diplomacy? It's a foreign policy that takes human rights as a basic norm of establishing and developing diplomatic relations. To put it simply, Taiwan, a renowned democratic country, has made an act to implement the two covenants, ICCPR and ICESCR, to strengthen our country's human rights protection system and to cultivate the diplomatic relations with other countries. Recently, the Comptroller has established the National Human Rights Commission to implement the Constitutional of People's Rights, laid down the basic condition for the promotion and protection of human rights, ensure the realization of social fairness and justice, and comply with the international human rights stand standards to establish universal human rights standard values and norms. If the NHRC works well to help consolidate our human rights, and demonstrate the improvement we have been making on human rights. In the near future, it may become another Taiwan model for other countries to follow, just like we are right now for combating COVID-19. Regarding the promotion of the human rights diplomacy, we need to continuously raise for our demand for active participation in the UN system, like the UN Human Rights Council. Besides, we can help defend human rights by participating in international human rights organizations such as Amnesty International, which employs a method of campaigns and advocacy through petitions, letters, and protests to call for action. The annual Asia Democracy and Human Rights Award was established by Taiwan Foundation for Democracy to honor individuals or organizations that have demonstrated long-term commitment in advancing democracy and human rights through peaceful means in Asia. The award consists of a sculpture and 100 UN dollars and 100,000 US dollars grant to support the to support the ongoing work of the recipient. Through this award, the TFD also pledges to deepen its relationship with each of the recipients and their partners to sustain and increase the impact of their work. We have limited space on the world stage. However, through our non-governmental organizations such as TFD or the Taiwan Association for Human Rights, we may stand a better chance to be seen by the world. We do not shirk our global responsibility. We fight for the human rights of all people. Meanwhile, we promote the good of ourselves. We will continue to participate in all kinds of international affairs. We will strive to speak for us and for people in need. Thank you. Thank you. Let's Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of what you learn from experiences and stories. Thus, today, we would like to invite you into the lives of three people and to connect you with them. Without further ado, let us welcome Jesse and our first story. There's nothing I can eat there. Zayan has been having the same dinner for seven days straight. As a Muslim, he can only eat food with halal certification. Life is hard there, with limited food source and occasional looks of discrimination. Then, in 2018, he moved to Taiwan. One day, he decided to go to the Islamic Cultural and Halal Food Exhibition in Darren Park. He is surprised to see how relaxing the fair is people chatting, and the children running about. The, 
and the children running about, the sizzling of satay, and the familiar scent of cumin seeds makes him right at home. As he makes his way through the crowd, a woman in a colorful kamir reminds him of his mother back home. Assalamu alaikum, a Taiwanese youth greets him. I haven't heard that for a very long time. This place is amazing, Zayan said. We hold this every year. Teens from all over Taiwan come to help. It's very busy here, but we love it. Zayan smiles. He has finally found his new home. Real understanding comes out of respect, with which we recognize our humanity in each other. Now, let's welcome Lydia and our second story. As Carrie leaves for school, he asks his mom, where's the money for the teacher? Carrie feels relief with the money in his hand, but just for the day. As he looks at the envelopes of bribes on his teacher's desk, he starts to worry about tomorrow. What if there's no money tomorrow? That day came earlier than he expected. He has to drop out and work on a farm. One day on his way home, a flyer lands at his feet. It's about Cambodia-Taiwan Education Plan, an organization that holds career forums for teenagers. I can start my education again, but what if this costs money? With worries, he arrives at the community center. Kerry sees many teenagers just like him there. Then, the speaker points at Kerry and asks, what do you want to do in the future? Kerry has never thought of this before. I have no idea, Kerry replies. It's OK, take your time. You'll find out after your classes with us. And don't worry, it's free. To educate is to liberate. Now, let's welcome David in our third story. It's not easy for people like you to get this award, the principal says to Charlie. His face flusters with embarrassment, saddened by a hint of a stereotype. On the bus ride home, Charlie hangs his head I worked so hard for this award, and this is what I got? Is it because my mother is Vietnamese? At home, he checks the mails and finds a brochure with the words, Grandmother's Bridge. It is a program that sponsors the children of new immigrants in Taiwan to visit their home country. After some interviews, Charlie and his mother are given the opportunity to visit Vietnam for 20 days. In Vietnam, Charlie and his cousin fly the birthday kites they make and jump along the human chest during the Hue Festival. Charlie starts to feel more like a local than a tourist. After he returns, Charlie becomes a different person. He can now talk about the uniqueness of being a Vietnamese as proudly as being a Taiwanese. Our strength as a society lies in cultural differences, not in similarities. Now, let's welcome Sherry for our conclusion. There you have it, the stories of three people's lives changed by Taiwanese youths who promote the rights of Muslim people in Taiwan, recover the Cambodian children's rights to education, and protect their own rights to cultural heritage. We are sure there will be more stories like those we have shared with you today. Thank you. 先回座休息。现在换我们下一队，请坐准备。Human rights has become a popular keyword on the internet since Taiwanese government declared the lifting of martial laws in 1987. Taiwan has passed a considerable amount of policies and acts to create a human rights-friendly society. 
the annual report, Country Reports on Human Rights Practices, submitted from Freedom House in the United States Department of State, has approved the progress Taiwan made in human rights. Taiwan has since become a champion of human rights. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs first mentioned the concept of human rights diplomacy under former President Chen. To promote human rights, the government made new laws and set up institutions to supervise and evaluate the human rights. The following were the steps we adopted. First, the government set up associations for human rights and then legislated the International Bill of Human Rights, making it a domestic law, which is the so-called the Enforcement Act of ICCPR and ICESCR. By doing so, we could make up for the deficiency of the Constitution of the Republic of China, enduring human rights for everyone in Taiwan. Human rights diplomacy refers to integrating human rights issues with bilateral relationships, such as economic partnership. It isn't merely a policy, it is a strategy to form values for pursuing freedom and democracy. Human rights diplomacy was first practiced officially by the Carter government. In the late 1970s, the U.S. gained support from around the world to contend with totalitarian regimes. Since then, human rights diplomacy has been an essential way to consolidate the values of democracy. As the importance of human rights is being emphasized, the persecution of human rights is receiving more and more attention as well. Take Hong Kong's anti-extradition movement, which began in 2019, for example. During a protest, constant conflicts between the citizens and the police were seen day by day, with more than 10,000 people arrested. Seeing such acts of suppressing human rights and democracy, a U.S. President, Donald Trump, signed the Hong Kong Act, imposing property and visa-blocking sanctions on the officials considered responsible for violating human rights. As for Taiwan, we have received asylum applications from at least 200 Hong Kongers, offering them counseling for employment, school attendance, and help settling into life in Taiwan. By standing together against the suppression of human rights and embracing democratic values, we have established a democratic front line in Asia, and we will proceed to consolidate the values for human rights. Since there are no boundaries in promoting human rights, the concerning diplomatic policies were also carried out in Europe. For instance, over the past few months, Taiwan has respectively signed conventions with Poland, Denmark, and the like, which includes comprehensive content such as cooperation in criminal justice. Just like our president said, democracy is in our DNA. It is what makes us Taiwanese. Democratic countries holding the same belief around the world should cooperate more closely to implement that spirit, whereas human rights is the most pivotal part in democracy. It can't be denied that human rights benefit all mankind, not only the people in our country, but also people from other nations, those who have been persecuted for such a long period. Although being excluded from international organizations, we regard human rights as our most divine principle and do our utmost to safeguard it. We put human rights diplomacy into practice. And we put human rights diplomacy into practice and speak up for the persecuted and the disadvantaged. Today, we stand together and fight against the violation of human rights. Taiwan can help, and Taiwan is helping. Thank you. 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 好，请第十一组上台
，计时开始。Human rights embody key values in our lives, such as dignity, equality, and respect. There are important there are important values for our lives, such as dignity, equality, and respect. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In recent years, Taiwan has been striving to assure people's human rights in Taiwan. What's more, because of the core value of our society, goodness and selflessness, we have developed the human rights diplomacy to assure and advance these universal ideas to other countries. Now, my partners will elaborate more about how Taiwan can act as a force to promote these ideas to the whole world. Thank you, Lucas. Human rights are the universal values for every human being. According to the Rome Declaration of Human Rights, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. These ideas are so important that they are highly advocated throughout the world, and Taiwan is no exception. Taiwan's constitution granted all citizens the freedom of speech, assembly, and equal rights to vote. This guarantee applies regardless of ethnicity, religion, and gender. As a Taiwanese citizens, we're lucky to live in the place where we can express ourselves freely without the fear of being arrested. If we are not satisfied with our government, we can go on strike on the street without being driven away by force. Furthermore, Taiwan once showed the world that we fulfill human rights through our presidential election. President Tsai Ing-wen. Taiwan's first female president was elected in 2016 and 2020. This truly shows that men and women are equal on this island, and our great examples can be applied to the world, isn't it, Andrew? That's right, Flora. Besides the presidential election my partner has just mentioned, human rights have been practiced in many of our laws in recent years. Let's take Same-Sex Marriage Act as an example. On May 17, 2019. The legislative yuan passed the cabinet's same-sex marriage bill, pushing Taiwan further along the road of reducing sex inequality. Taiwan is the first country which legalized same-sex marriage in Asia. It's definitely the best evidence to show the world that our human rights are ensured. What's more, citizens in Taiwan can propose a new policy through the platform that is run by National Development Council. If the votes have reached the threshold, our government needs to give a response. This gives every citizen in Taiwan the right to participate in formulating policies and supervise our government. That again shows human rights is definitely the universal value of Taiwan. What do you think, Barry? I can't agree with you more, Andrew. Human rights indeed is the pride of Taiwan. Because of our outstanding performance in human rights and democracy, the world has acknowledged that Taiwan is a country who shares the same core values of pursuing liberty, democracy, and equality with most parts of the world. Through human rights diplomacy, we will gain more friendly support from the others, which could further assist us while we apply to international organizations and associations. As a result. We can contribute more to the global community, giving us a win-win situation. For the past decades, Taiwanese people have strived to promote human rights and to improve the people's lives. As you can see, we've really made changes. Today, we have not only gained more international relationships, but has also greatly increased our positive reputation. This truly is a significant achievement. Now, Lucas will conclude our speech. Thank you, Valerie. Indeed, freedom of speech, equal rights to vote, and same-sex marriage are just some of the many examples of Taiwan's strengths in human rights. For now, Taiwan may still be excluded from many world organizations, but our achievements in human rights, democracy, and freedom are now seen and appreciated by the whole world. We believe as long as we keep on doing the right thing and work together for the greater good, we will surely have a, a promising future. Thank you. 好，感谢我们第十一队同学，请回座休息。我们请下一队做准备。好，同学，这是我们第十二队哈。这一队结束以后呢，我们就会做休息。大家加油，好，再撑一下。
。好，我们请十二队，请上台。计时开始。Taiwan has long been separate from the world stage since being outside from the United Nations in 1961. Despite its past, the country has achieved economic miracles by outpacing Japan and Western European countries. In recent years, in recent years, Taiwan has emerged as a manufacturing world leader of semiconductor product. Playing an indispensable role by manufacturing large quantities for world stage, thereby giving affirmation of Taiwan's participation. However, not much of the world knows about Taiwan in the various aspect of the world's contribution it has already made. Moreover, as the only successfully democracy-oriented and implemented country of Chinese-speaking countries. With the population of only 23 million people, this is a significant achievement to combine. Nevertheless, no one can accept the cruel fact that Taiwan is not accepted in many aspects by the world stage. This current diplomatic, polite, and pol Political isolation situation by field by Chinese mainland has resulted in world war diplomacy to dismantle established foreign relationships with Taiwan by cutting off diplomacy. The global community should never forget that both China and Taiwan operate under very different political systems and values, especially in human rights affairs and freedom of speech. In fact. Almost every Taiwanese knows what it feels like to be marginalized within the global community. While the global powers might not care much for Taiwan's isolation and marginalization at China's behest, human rights and democracy are fields upon which China is unlikely to exert much influence, except in the UN. It is one of the few avenues where Taiwan can shine and be heard, and its continuous participation in the global events is the main key to move forward. The most visible tactic is to make concern over human rights issue a key part of bilateral relationship, linking progress to improve trade and other relationship. In addition to such country-specific approaches, however, Taiwan might also promote human rights globally by seeking international attention of specific human rights themes. For example, a relation of certain categories of rights holders, such as women, migrant, the landless. And also certain type of rights, for instance, freedom of association, self determinations. For example, the Uyghurs has long been persecuted by China for decades. This is due to China's perception that the religion, that the religion, of the legitimacy poses a threat to the legitimacy under the rule of China, and to the branch of the ruling propaganda. On the contrary. Taiwan, through the enactment of ROC's constitution, has long been advocated for human rights, the right of freedom of speech, and religion for Uyghur people. In fact, Taiwan has long condemned the confinement of Uyghur people, in which more than one million are still confined to the similar concentration camps utilized by Nazis during World War II. As the world's anti-China trend continues to gain momentum, Taiwan must continue to advocate in a global effort to unanimously decry the suffering of the Uyghurs' religious persecution. It is through such condemnation Taiwan can be characterized as a human rights protection country and garner support from those countries who have long criticized China's persecution of the Uyghur people. Similarly, through cooperation with other countries and allies, Taiwan can congregate support to help improve basic human rights of the Uyghurs, or at least champion for the release of the Uyghurs in the camp, through a shared goal of freedom of movement and the residents. Such course of action for improved human rights advocation for the Uyghurs is typical for a classic example of human rights diplomacy, and Taiwan can really help. Thank you. 感谢第十二队，请回座休息。好，这就是我们的上半段第一阶段的团体英语即席演讲的比赛。